Hello there, my name is Porgo and I'll be the voice for this handy tutorial. As a new Cossacks player, there are things you can do to improve your performance in game. Let's start with some overall tips. A common mistake I see Pekinius do is not producing units infinitely. If you do not produce units at every opportunity, you will be outnumbered and lose. Keep in mind that the cost of units is insignificant. You can use Ctrl plus left click while making units to produce an infinite amount of them. Be careful not to produce Grenadiers, Dragoons and Siege Cossacks infinitely however, because their price increases with every unit produced. It is better to produce these units in bulk, using the Shift key to make 5 and Ctrl and Alt key to make 100 units at once. Other units in the Diplomatic Center can be produced infinitely, as their price does not increase. Another mistake I see people do is producing two types of units from the same building. For example, a situation like this, where the player produces both Musketeers and Pikemen. This is a mistake because the player is obligated to upgrade two types of units at once, resulting in less upgraded units in general. It is also not effective tactically, as explained in Colorfit's other video, How to Win Battles, which you can see in the top right corner or in the link in the description below. Instead of producing two types of units in the barracks, use the diplomatic center to complement your infantry. For example, when making musketeers, make ranchiers. When making pikemen, make grenadiers and dragoons. When it comes to controlling your army, many beginners do not know how to properly attack an enemy. While this sounds simple at first, it's more complicated than you might think. Try to use the attack on the go button or press the A key before right-clicking behind the enemy force. This ensures that your units will attack the closest enemy unit and go on to fight another. This is much better than older alternatives, such as right-clicking on individual units. This results in all of your army focusing on one unit and not other closer targets. Your economy is the foundation of your military. This is why it is important to quickly make many peasants and have them harvest useful resources for a faster expansion. Gold mines are the most important and you should get them as soon as you see them. Wood and food are the resources your peasants should collect in the early game because the efficiency upgrades for the production are cheap and they are also used early game to do upgrades and construct new buildings. In the mid-game, a food-based economy with the 18th century mill upgrade is better than an economy based on stone because it's cheaper and doesn't require coal that can be used for other upgrades. In the late game, when most of your upgrades have been completed and coal is plentiful, it is a good idea to move to a stone-based economy. 50 peasants mining stone can trade for more gold than 50 peasants harvesting wood or food, so you can create more military buildings to expand your military faster. A surprisingly good way to improve your economy strategy is constructing your buildings closer together to save space and so your peasants can travel shorter distances between the construction sites. This also means you can get to produce units quicker because the buildings will be finished faster. Another construction-related tactic is building your storehouses close to the resource deposits, which can result in a 10 to 20% higher resource collection efficiency, boosting your economy for the entire game. The market is an extremely important building throughout the entire game. You can speed up development massively through trading resources you have lots of to ones that you need. What you see here is a great example of a good use of the market, Trading resources you don't need at the moment to get resources for the third town hall at the start of the game without even harvesting any resources. Later in the game, the market can be used to trade huge amounts of food, wood, or stone for gold, iron, and coal to make costly upgrades in the 18th century barracks or the academy. The best build order you can start with is to get as many town halls and 17th century barracks as you can. The next thing you should focus on is building all of your gold mines. After that, aim for the diplomatic center and then coal and iron mines. Then you have two options. You can create stables and do some upgrades or go 18th century and get some more advanced units. 
Walls are commonly used by new players to prevent them from being raided. However, there are better methods to prevent raid, like designating some units at your base which will fight raiders. Wooden walls are cheap and fast to build, but are weak and can be easily broken. I do not recommend them. Stone walls are much stronger and more useful, but they require lots of time and patterns to build, and this weakens your economy. I would only advise them in the late game. If you are wondering what nation to play, Hungary is a good nation for beginners. It is not very complicated and it's powerful in 17th and 18th century. Hungary is a typical European nation. This is good because most nations in the game are European and are all similar in many ways. This will help you learn how to play other European nations. In no peacetime game mode, I advise to make pikemen. Musketeers can't get upgrades fast enough and the coal and iron required to maintain them is a big blow to your early game economy. You can always switch to musketeers later in the game. When it comes to pikemen, it's important to make them into formations as fast as you can. The plus 2 attack and defense bonuses make a huge difference, one that you should not underestimate. In 10 and 20 minutes peacetime modes, musketeers start to become effective because of the resources abundance that can be used to make upgrades in the academy, such as fire rate and power. Pikemen require more skill to be effective, so I recommend to use musketeers for beginners. You should also make sure your economy is strong. A good idea is to make a third town hall fast. More peasants results in a stronger economy in the long run. In 30 minutes peacetime mode and higher, the economy is everything. Aim for as many town halls as you possibly can and go for stone-based economy with both of the efficiency upgrades in the academy. This will help you get resources to build many stables and barracks in the second half of peacetime. In 1000 resource mode, your initial aim should be to construct two 17th century barracks and two town halls. They are cheap and both boost your economy and military. You can do this through a combination of trading and harvesting – wood, stone and gold. The lower amount of resources slows down the game. This means, in 10 peacetime mode, you should make pikemen instead of musketeers, as you would not have the resources required to effectively use them. In no market modes, focus on getting the mines faster than you normally would, actively seeking out and building them, especially gold. Be sure to upgrade them quickly too. This is because mine resources, usually gold, are the bottleneck in your economy and military. You do not want to have to wait for gold or to run out of iron and coal while your musketeers are shooting. Thanks for watching our Buccaneers guide. If you enjoyed, please share with your friends and remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. This has been Forgo. See you later.